Hi, I'm Linda Kane, a solo admin eloper at Travel Centers of America. I have worked in the Salesforce ecosystem for 12 years and have earned seven certifications. Today, I'm sharing with you the five steps that I take to create awesome data dictionaries of the objects and fields in the Salesforce instances I work in so that you too can create technical documentation about your org to help you and others. A data dictionary is a technical document that provides information about the objects or tables in a system or database and the attributes or fields of that object. Typically, it will tell you the data type for those fields, something about the relationship of those fields with others in the same object or with other objects. The state of those fields, like are they required? Does the data have to be unique? Um, and if um, they have limited values, like pick list fields and what those values are. It may also include some information about the usage of that field, the data source, the security or PII status, and the system location where you can find that data. When creating a data dictionary, the first step is to list out the objects and their fields. Doing this manually can be time consuming and tedious. Luckily, there are tools. So for our first step, we're gonna say use a tool to get started. I'm actually gonna demo two of these tools, but know that there are other ones out there and you need to try them out. See which one works best for you and your organization. So let's get on with the demo. The first tool I'm gonna to demo is called Schema Lister. To get to it, I go to cloudtoolkit.co and I locate the Schema Lister product on this page. It's in the middle of the page. I click on it. And then I have to choose whether I want to do this in production or a sandbox. If you've got a large production or really even a smaller one, it's always a better idea to create a new sandbox before you do this and use the sandbox. That way you, there's no chance you're interfering with work being currently done or the API calls in that org. The second thing to note on this page that it mentions is that the description field is not included in the REST API. While you really should still use the description field to record information about the fields in your org, just know that you won't be able to extract it this way. I'm using a developer org, so I'm just gonna say production. And I click to log in with OAuth. I'm already logged into my org and it recognizes that. If it did not, I would have to log in with my username and password. I'm quickly confirming that it's the correct email for the user account I'm using. And I say allow. Then takes me to the next screen where I have two choices to make. The first is whether I want to include managed package objects. If I don't include managed package ob objects, any field in the object that comes from that managed package will not show up in the results I get. So it's usually a good idea to do that unless you have a large number of managed packages or one that has a lot of objects in it and you really don't need it. The second is about field usage. Field usage gives you another column that includes information like what page layouts will I find this field in? What Apex classes call it? What Visual Force pages might it be included in? Or workflows. This can be very useful when building your data dictionary. However, what I've found in the past is Schema Lister sometimes includes classes that or workflow that maybe that field really isn't used in because the API name is the same for the field in account and in contact and in other objects. So use it with caution. The other thing to note is it will take longer for this to run when I select field usage. Once I'm ready, I click get schema and the process runs. It can take quite a while if I have a large number of objects or a lot of custom fields in my objects. And as I already mentioned, if I'm including my field usage, it's definitely going to take longer. Hopefully. This won't take very long for us. Um, we've been timing it and it hasn't taken too long. In fact, it just finished. When I'm done, I get this nice page that includes six pieces of information about the fields and my objects listed by object. I can jump around this by object to see um, what things are out there, but I actually care more about exporting this so that I can um, continue to work on it. I have two options with Schema Lister. I can export this kind of just like it looks here where I have one big large tab with all the objects, the fields and the information about them, or I can export it to a multi-tab format. I prefer the multi-tab format because then I can work object by object. 
So I'm going to click on that and it produces my file, which looks like this when I open it. As you can see at the bottom, I have tabs for each of my objects. Right now you see only standard objects, but if I move down a little further, you can see I also have custom objects. For each page, I get six columns. They're kind of scrunched together right now, so my next step is obviously going to be to clean this up a bit. But before I do that, I want to show you a second tool. So if I log into my Salesforce org, I am on an object right here. It's actually a custom object called Wayne. I want to get a data dictionary and I don't want to have to look through all the fields and relationships and write it manually. This object is actually kind of smaller, so it's not wouldn't be a big deal, but it's still time consuming. So I've installed a Chrome extension called Salesforce DevTools. All I have to do is click on it and it pops up contextually. Um, in this case, I have yet to activate it. So first I'm going to have to activate it and it asks me again if I want to do that and I allow it. And now contextually it's showing me, hey, I'm on the way object and it gives me a number of choices. The choice I care about right now is this export. So if I click on the export button, I can see I have a couple different options. The first one is object field definitions. That's the one I really want because it's going to export the objects in the fields into a reference in Excel. So I click on that. It creates my file. And I've already got it open here so I can show it to you what it looks like. I get this, you know, it looks a little different. Um, it gives me the object, the API name, and then again, a number of the fields, the API name of the field, the field label, uh, the data type, the length, if um, length is important for that particular field, like it's text, it's a number field, et cetera. The field type, in this case, standard or custom, is it required? Um, pick list values are broken out. The formula, if there is one, and then, um, I'm not sure what extend ID is because I haven't had any with that. And then also a help text. So it puts it out, it looks a little nicer than the other tool. But either way, once I've gotten my data and used that tool to get started, my next step is to clean up that extract for readability. So with schema lister, one of the things that you may notice right away is this pick list value. In parentheses next to the pick list value, are the actual values. A little difficult to read at times. And when I go to kind of start cleaning up and widen my columns automatically, you can see it makes some or some really wide columns. So one of the first things I tend to do for cleaning up when I use schema lister is to pull those pick list fields and put them into a separate column. In if I'm using DevTools, I'm going to, again, deal with resizing my columns to make things fit better so there's not much overlapping. And then I might also look at um, doing some wrap text. So maybe I don't want this column to be this wide, so I would narrow it and wrap the text, just like I said, for readability. So really, my second step is just kind of cleaning up so I can read things better and when I'm working with it. Once I've got it cleaned up for readability, my next step is to add additional columns for other information I wish to add. So this is data that's not really easily extractable from Salesforce or a tool, but stuff that's useful to have, especially if I'm sharing this data dictionary with other technical users in my organization. So things I would add would be the usage. How is this field used? Who uses it? Why is it important? Um, data source. Where's the data coming from? Is it from an automation? Is there an integration that's involved? Field service level. Who has view and read-only access to this field? It can be really important to know that, especially, you know, if suddenly in a meeting you're, you're asked why a user can't do something. If you have that in front of you in a data dictionary, that saves you a lot of time than having to research. History tracking. Which fields are being tracked in history? Again, another really useful tool to have, say you're meeting with someone and they're talking about some data issues and they say, hey, I want to track history for a while. You'll know right away whether you're reaching the limits on what you can do for history tracking and then figure out with them what field could you stop tracking in favor of the one you need, including page layouts and where on that page the field is can be helpful in identifying fields that might not be used anymore as you go through it. And then having a place to record notes and questions you may have about a specific field can also be helpful. 
once I've added those columns, obviously it needs to get filled out. So I'm going to put in the information I know. I might have to look at that description field I have hopefully filled out or someone has filled out in Salesforce to get more information. But I should also seek help from other users, developers, business administrators. Um, anyone who knows and uses Salesforce could hopefully provide me with some information about what's going on, where the data is coming from, how it's used, all that. It's important to get that information as much as you can and as complete as you can, especially when you're working with other team members who might need to use those fields. It'll also help you to identify fields that might not be used. You may even have to run some SQL queries to take a look at some of the data to say, hey, this hasn't ever been populated. Maybe we don't need it anymore because it's a custom field. Or maybe it's temporarily populated, or maybe it's just used in a report and that's why it's not in a page layout. Filling out the data dictionary with these extra fields can help you identify those things. Then lastly, you need to store this data dictionary. I recommend either storing it in libraries in Salesforce or having a shared directory or SharePoint or something that whatever your organization uses so that you can share it with other technical users who might not have access to Salesforce. The nice thing of storing it in Salesforce obviously is the convenience of having it at your fingertips while you're in Salesforce and also the fact that if you store it in files, especially in libraries, you can get a little bit of versioning on it so you can have some of the history. And then lastly, maintain this data dictionary. You know, if you create it once and you've added a ton of fields, make sure you add those fields in the data dictionary so it's up to date and you can still share it and it's meaningful and useful. Doing all these steps really make it possible to succeed and continue on with having good technical documentation in your org. Here I've provided a couple links for you for the two tools I've demonstrated, Schema Lister, CloudToolkit.co, and the DevTools Chrome extension. You could always just search in Chrome for Salesforce DevTools as well. And then lastly, I provide actually a sample data dictionary that I've put together from my developer org. So you can see kind of what it looks like when it's more filled out with a, the additional fields. And as I said, maintaining becomes really important with a document like this. It's really external to your org. But luckily, the tools that are out there can help you identify the differences over time. And as we develop these orgs, we can all succeed. These orgs and these documentations, we can all succeed together creating technical documentation that's useful for ourselves and those we work with. I wanna thank you for joining me and learning the five steps to create awesome data dictionaries for your Salesforce instance.